Welcome to the Blessed Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson, and you are here with on our podcast, Blessed, because you have obviously heard me talk about Blessed as being a mind, uh, all about mindset, and you resonated with that. So thank you for being here. I am broadcasting on WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, a nonprofit charitable radio broadcast with the mission to empower, encourage, and educate. Now, if you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, please, 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 one more time, please go to www.wytv7.org and donate. It's important. Mm -hmm. We This is a ministry, but ministry needs money, okay? Don't forget that. All right, I'm going fast because we got so much in, we got so much to talk about today, y'all. It is about it was about to be Valentine's Day. And I want to talk about love. I want to talk about, you know, marriage. I want to talk about how religion may be hindering or helping hmm. with your search for um your soulmate. And welcome my guest, Nicole Jones. She was, she's been here before. She's been here before. She's a mom and she's my Sarah. Yes. <laughs> she's also an author, a speaker, an entrepreneur. She is a narrative healing transformation coach. I love that sound right. Narrative healing transformation coach. I know some of y'all are like, what is that? I immediately know what that is, but we're going to have her <laughs> tell us about that. And she's also a lifestyle strategist. Ah, that sounds cool. So welcome back, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Raquel. Thank you. So, you know, we got to start off because I know everybody like, what is a narrative healing transformation coach? Yes. Go ahead and tell them. Narrative healing is taking ownership of your life, your past, all of your experiences and transforming your life by telling your story, telling and owning your story. Um, a lot of people, especially if you're raised as a person of color, um, you're told at a very early age, what goes on in this house stays in this house, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's damaging. Mm -hmm. That's damaging. Because what that does is it tells us at a very young age that we can't walk and stand in our truth. Mm. Very young. That's reinforced over and over and over time by over and over again by mama, grandmama, aunties. It's just poured down in us. Mm -hmm. So we actually don't even know how to walk in our own truth. So when truth mm -hmm. slaps us in the face, it devastates us most of the time. Right. Whatever our truth looks like, whatever we've gone through in life, bad, good, ugly, indifferent, whatever, it devastates us because we don't know how to own it. Yes. And so what I do is work with women through um, putting together anthologies. Most of the time I do anthologies, they never have a theme. But I find that when you write out your truth. Whatever was designed, whatever happened in your life that devastated you, silenced you, you couldn't tell anybody. When you get to a point where you want to release that, there is so much healing, not only for you, but for those who are going to read your story. So that's what I do. Oh, that is awesome. That's awesome. I love it. So now, you know what, when I think of, but also when I think of narrative, it's, it's really interesting because one of the things that I am really passionate about is telling people they don't have to keep telling the same story. That's right. Because a lot of times we have, and, and I'm not saying that it's not the truth. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the example of my story. The man left me to raise my son all by myself. I've been that's there. A very, that's a victim story. Mm -hmm. He left me to raise my, and if I continue to repeat that story, if that's the story I tell, I'm, I'm a victim in that story. So mm -hmm. I changed the story. I was like, mm -mm. spirit got that person up out of my life so I can raise my son right. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Spirit knew what was needed. Right. Spirit knew what the impact would be had this, this person stayed in the children's lives. That's how I always looked at it. Yes. So had yes. he been around, they may not have become what they needed to become. Okay. And also the way that I also look at it is that, oh my gosh, you just didn't get the benefit of these three beautiful souls. Yes. And, and no you bad. Know what, but it's more, but I don't feel like a victim with that. Story. Not at all. I feel like the, I feel like God was with me that God, you know, took me yeah. out of some stuff and God made sure that my son had what he 
absolutely needed to be the person that God wanted to, you know, him to be. That's but, right. And and so it's like, come on, we got to start that that that's real healing. Yeah. By changing our stories and by changing you know, the narrative. The narrative by changing the narrative that mm-hmm. we're telling ourselves. And like I said, it's not to say that the stuff didn't happen. Mm-hmm. It's just how you looking at it. Mm-hmm. How yeah. you look at it. You know, me and you, we we bond <laughs> over our love for God. Yes. And our trepidation I don't maybe with the church. Is that a good word? Um, I, I don't even know if it's trepidation with the church as much as it is the love of God. So when you have that, when you embrace um, the love of God, you know, just like scripture says, many are called, few are chosen. Okay. And it's that chosen few that are privileged to go into a deeper level with God. Okay. And when you go into a deeper level, you have more awareness than the masses, the awareness than the called, the more awareness than the sheep. Mm-hmm. And so we have more insight. That's why I like to think, you know, the, what scripture also says is that God will tell you unsearchable things that you do not know. And right. so he doesn't tell everybody. He chooses who he tells that to. Mm. And so there's things, I don't think it's a trepidation with the church. It is just, we have an understanding of God's true heart. Okay. That's okay. it. That's how yes. I look at it. Yes. That, okay. So okay. some of this stuff that they got as church and shenanigans as they call church, and this is not church conversation, but we can call, we can have another call for that. Right. <laughs> But a lot of the things that are that we're seeing now, he's tearing them down. In 2017, he told me that. He said, every pillar that you see right now will come down. He specifically spoke of government, church, and education. Mm. I rest my case. I can shut my mouth right now. COVID did it, didn't it? Madam Corona did it, didn't she? Because she... You know, and, and it was so weird for me. And I know y'all like, what's y'all talking about love? But you know what? Y'all just got to wait. Because <laughs> what I found when people couldn't go to church, they about lost their minds. And I'm People like, don't know what to do. I was like, God is everywhere you are. Why you got to go up in the church mm-hmm. to be with God? And mm-hmm. then if we got Zoom, we could be together on Zoom. I was like, y'all tripping. tripping. It, it, it's almost like you could really see it for how God sees it. We couldn't understand it while we were there. I grew up in church, grew up in AME. I mean, I loved, I was actually driving and um, um, on my playlist, you might get uh, Lil Wayne followed by Michael Stampley, followed by Bunny Ray. You just don't know, right? Yes. So yes. I got all of that and I was actually, Michael Stampley came on War Cry. So I'm singing it because I'm a singer. I love to yes. sing, right? And I can still do all of that. But about two or three months ago, um, I was taking my, my daughter to college. So maybe it was more than two or three months ago. But I was singing a song that I sang forever. How much do I owe by Georgia Mass Choir? And I got to the part where it said, how much do I owe for the, uh, for the price you paid for me on the cross? Something like that. The minute I got to that verse, I heard spirit loud and clear. It was almost like Jesus sat in the passenger seat. And he said, y'all still singing about me on the cross. Mm -hmm. I ain't on the cross Mm -hmm. y'all love to sing about something that was very painful for me Mm. that doesn't bring me glory Mm. and I sat there and I was it was like he was literally sitting in my car that's how convicted I was Mm. so I was crying and I was laughing at the same time because you know that's my relationship with God like he'll gather me immediately so he was like y'all still singing about me on the cross I ain't on no cross Right. That was painful for me. And y'all love to sing about it as if I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I'm driving and I'm like, dang, God, okay, then you ain't have to get me like that, but down. <laughs> okay, then you just could have said you ain't like the song. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> I'd be crying down the street, but okay, I get it. Yeah. I was immediately convicted. And there's a scripture in um Amos that talks about. Um, you know, these are the scriptures that these are the books and passages of scripture that your pastor never read, right? You never <laughs> heard these things. This is yeah. stuff that God has to show you. It's in the Bible because you never heard it in church. Uh, but it talks about the part where God says, I am so over your conventions and your conferences and mm. your and the songs, your noisy songs that bring me no glory. Mm. Oh. And now that we're seeing this time, right? We're in this yeah. time where they don't know what to do right they don't but we know 
Yeah, yeah. We know exactly what to do. And I think it's time for us to start talking about it. I have a lot of hesitance. I may talk Maybe. about it here and there, Maybe. but who wants to get the backlash? The what seminary did you go to? Mm-hmm. And all of those mm-hmm. things that really the same thing that Christ got, because I'll tell everybody, listen, they wouldn't have wanted to kill somebody that was saying what they wanted to hear. Oh, girl, we, you know what? I'm going to have to stop this conversation now because I can already tell you that we will spend this whole time because that is something that I have been. Oh, y'all. I'm if he stopped. was so meek and mild like y'all wanted him to be, they wouldn't have hung. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't have, have put hung. up on. They wouldn't no. have wanted to kill somebody that was meek and mild. No, no. But clearly no. he was. Yeah. He was left like, and was right. He was saying some stuff that they didn't want people to know. But wait a minute. Let let me. Let's talk about love. (laughs) Let's talk about love. But wait a minute, because the love that I want to talk about, though, it really it goes back to the church, though, because do you think that our religious beliefs in church is keeping us from real love? Absolutely. Um, So, well, yes and no. Uh, Oh, let me see how I want to go to this. Um, There is a part of church that is that um, there's a doctrine that teaches the waiting and that no one is good enough for you um, and all of that. So it has a pew full of single women. All of these women, right, are praying for a husband or a mate. All of these men perhaps are praying for a wife or a mate, but none of those prayers are getting answered. Mm. So the, the Bible says the answers of the Lord are yea and amen. Okay. Mm. Yay right. and amen. It don't say, yeah, no, maybe so. And amen, it says, yeah, yeah. and amen. So if you're not getting answers and something is wrong. Okay. Okay. So we have single conferences. We have single ministries at church. What are they rooted in? Because there's a lot of, and I, I posted on my Facebook today about Christian influencers that will say, um, you don't need to link up with someone who might jeopardize your anointing in Christ. It's like we've sold and made um, marriage bad. Hmm. Where did that come from? Where, where did our fear and how did our fear of heartbreak Mm-hmm. Our fear of disappointment, our fear of what my friends going to say, mm-hmm. our fear of this may not end as I wanted it to. Right. How did that become more dominant in our decision making than love? Oh, girl, you just, oh, you first of all, you stepped on my toe right there. And I, because I, I, I read somewhere where you say is the danger of isolation is greater than the risk of intimacy. You posted Absolutely. that. Yes. And I was, when I read that, I was just like, oh. Because let me tell you something, the whole idea of the enemy is to get you alone. Yeah. Satan didn't come to Christ when he was amongst the people. He waited till he was out fasting, right? Mm -hmm. By himself. Mm -hmm. And that's when he went to, well, what about this? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go jump off this cliff? You know, all of those things he kept saying to him Mm -hmm. when he was by himself. We tend to, from one bad experience, however many we had, we feel like God can do everything. He can get us a new car. He can get us a new job. He can get us a new house. But for some reason, he can't get us a mate. <laughs> I don't think that got anything to do with God. That part. That part. He has, he has a plethora of people. Mm-hmm. He So if we, we feel that God comes from, we can say God is a God of abundance in all of those things. We manifest in money, blah, 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 yeah. blah. But when it comes to love, he's not. Right. When he right. is, the very essence of God is love. And, and the very essence of us is, is love. love. But right. we, but he, if, if child, it ain't nobody. Ain't no single me in here. Right. Right. How? Right. Where'd you even get that from? Yeah. You know, and and because and I'm gonna speak for myself, I'm not gonna speak for other people because we 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 stay on that story. I haven't found the, the person hurt me or that person didn't want me. So nobody that nobody I'm attracted to would be attracted to me because the one for the because a couple of people that I was attracted to wasn't attracted to me. But they weren't the only people that I'm attracted to. Right. And it's like, so why am I telling myself that story? Yeah. Even if you don't say it out loud, you think it's it, deep in you. you. Mm-hmm. It's deep inside 
of those those thoughts. And so you just, you know, you just keep like, you probably don't even see the person that you're attracted to because you automatically, you're thinking, yeah, I'm not attracted to nobody that's attracted to me. So, you know, you only yep. see in the people that you're not attracted to. Well, so it's not even a matter of attraction. That's number one. That's, mm-hmm. that is worldly myth number one, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Because that where where in his word did God say I need you to be attracted to somebody before I present them to you? Okay. Show me and then I'll say okay. But mm-hmm. otherwise, I don't see any example of that. Mm-hmm. The only example that I base a lot of my teachings, a lot of my wisdom on, because I ask God for wisdom, don't none of this stuff come from me, right? It's things that he downloaded. But a lot of it is based on the word. Period. Mm-hmm. A lot of what we know and what we, we love to quote, I am in the world, but not of it. Everything that we do is of the world. It's of the world. Every doggone thing we do is of the world yeah. because we believe in dating. We believe in, I got to be attracted to somebody. Yeah. And like you just said, yeah. every person that you were attracted to didn't work out. So right. it's at some point we got to renounce that thought and say, all right, God, your turn. Mm-hmm. God ain't gonna bring you no junk and I think people are so women are so afraid of yeah. saying that of mm-hmm. relinquishing that to God because it's a matter of trust and we don't know what he's going to present right right but he's not going to present junk mm-hmm. he knows you he knew you before he even formed you in your mother's womb so right. we we have we think that we're supposed to be compatible with someone wrong myth number two Okay. It is what you need. God knows exactly what you need. His ways are way higher than ours. Mm-hmm. He knows what you need in order to get your heart positioned and purpose in a way that he can speak to you and work through you. So your heart has to be softened in a way where you can hear him. Okay, That's all it is about so that you can do the purpose that he has for your life so that you can bring him glory. That's all marriage is about. It is vertical. It is not horizontal. Mm-hmm. It's all relationship is about. It is vertical. It is him. It is not horizontal. Wow. So mm-hmm. um, the person that I date is completely OCD. Mm. I am nowhere near OCD. You would think that would drive me crazy. Yeah. But I can be messy as all get out. Mm-hmm. Now, when I am with him, mm-hmm. what do I do? Put stuff neatly. That's a need that only God knows she would need that. Mm-hmm. Because she doesn't want to hear his mouth. So she doesn't walk in and just kick her shoes off. Mm -hmm. Right. She walks in and she actually puts her shoes neatly. That's how God meets needs. Mm -hmm. He also is very structured. I am very spontaneous. There's a need for him because if he's going to grow in the ministry the way that God needs him to, you can't always be structured. Everybody's not going to get what you say the first time. Right. Everybody ain't going to look like you. That's how God puts people together based on our need. Got nothing to do with attraction. Now, is he dog ugly? No, he's, he's very handsome. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. He's very handsome. He's educated. All of those things that I would have wanted. Went to an HBCU, educated, all of those things, but I didn't pick him. Mm-hmm. Big difference. What I picked walked out the door. <laughs> he's saying what you think left. <laughs> Right. Well, I picked left, so I was like, okay, then you do it this time. Your turn. Mm-hmm. I'll just wait for you to do it. Okay. I remember when I had my first conversation, I was I came home a Friday night, and I was like, well, dang, God, don't nobody ask me. I have one date, just one. So once I got still, I sat on my bed. I was going to watch something on TV, and I rarely turned my TV on, but it was something I was going to watch. Mm-hmm. And so as I got ready to turn TV on, I heard spirits say, what is it that you want love to do for you? Hmm. What? <laughs> what is it that you want love to do for you? He said it again. I didn't know how to answer that. Hmm. Because when have we ever been asked that? Right. Yeah. In life. Right. You come home from college first and your mom, your auntie, girl, you ain't met nobody yet. Right. (laughs) Girl, you ain't married yet. Uh Girl, what's wrong with you? 
Nobody says, what is it that you want love to do for you? And essentially, because God is love, what he was saying is, what is it that you want me to do for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't even know how to answer it. Mm -hmm. When I'm coaching women, particularly when they have gotten the career, gotten all this stuff, and they get to a certain age and they're like, oh, I'm by myself. Mm Mm-hmm. My bloodline is going to die with me. Mm. Then when I start asking them, well, what happened? You didn't have anybody. Did it, did it? You start unpacking that thing and you realize, babe, the answer is you. It ain't nobody else nobody but else. you and your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's that's so true. That is so true. And you know what? And, and you, because um, we... It's already 10 minutes. We 10 minutes. I know, I know it's it. It's crazy because this is so good. But the other thing I would like, you posted something that says you can you can be the total package, but be at the wrong address. And I when I read that, I was like, that's clearly to that because a lot of times you think, what's wrong with me? Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with us. Ain't nothing wrong with nobody. You you perfect, whole, and complete. Perfect, whole, complete. You're looking for the wrong thing. You at the wrong door. At the wrong door, waiting for the wrong, you know, and just like, you know, we trying to fix it ourselves and we we keep throwing, you know, giving ourselves to the wrong people. Mm-hmm. We keep giving and we keep, we, we will not surrender that parts of our life to God. We just won't. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. We just won't won't fully trust God with that aspect of our lives. Yeah. And you know what? Because I I need to make sure I get this. I was on um Clubhouse. No, no, no. It was it was on Facebook and somebody posted um a female told him that God said that he was going to be her husband. And he was like, um I have a relationship with God and God will tell me. Mm-hmm. It, you know, who's supposed to and I, and as much as I, I like, I understand when you say, well, God told you this, God told you, but sometimes we have to operate in wisdom and yep. we should mm-hmm. not be going around telling folk because mm-hmm. God can do that. God can, God, mm-hmm. it's like God told you, God going to tell you, mm-hmm. is that, that God going to mm-hmm. tell them. God also gives free will. Mm-hmm. He also gives free will. And a lot, that goes back to that question you asked about how the church, the church does that a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, walk up to someone and well, God said you were going to be my husband. That whole name it and claim it thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that man that. <laughs> no, he didn't tell you, but this is what you want. Um, you know, maybe he's, he's had, he presented something that you wanted, right? Again, that's not God telling you any of that. Uh-huh. That's uh-huh. in your mind. That's mindset too. That mm-hmm. comes from the name it and claim it. Um, you know, you can have all those things they preach. Yeah. Foolishness, foolish <laughs> ideology and doctrines. It's yeah. not even biblically sound. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere in the Bible where some woman walked up to a man and said, you're going to be my husband. Now, <laughs> Ruth, if I must, Ruth and um, Lord, what was Ruth's mother-in-law? Oh, my, oh no, Naomi. Naomi. Naomi plotted because Naomi was hungry. Now she yes. plotted. Now. She plotted. But yes, we don't want to talk about that. So, but Nippy Naomi Nippy. plotted Nippy because Nippy. Naomi was hungry yes. and, and poor. Yes. And she put Ruth out there. And if y'all think that Ruth was laying at somebody's feet, come again, because she wasn't. Ruth was doing this is for the church folks that uh-huh. love to holler about they want a Boaz. Ruth wasn't rubbing no feet at night. <laughs> y'all can believe it if you want. She was rubbing, but it wasn't feet. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know when it, everybody you talk about that Boaz and stuff, it's so funny because I be like Boaz was old. It was old. Most mo- most of these young women really don't want no old man like that. No, when they, they talk about one of Boaz. All they really thinking about is rich, and it's like rich. Yeah, come on. With- okay, because I and, and I'm just saying this, y'all. I'm saying this out of love, and I'm saying it because I know where I was back in the day. But God is saying. Why do you need a man to provide all this money when I'm your provider? I am your I'm provider. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Not the man. He's Jehovah Jireh. So whoever you with, I'm going to provide. He's not going to stop providing. 
Okay, let me listen, say. Let like, me you say. know how your daddy might stop giving you money because you're married. He like yeah. your husband, and 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 he should because that's just should. to your husband for your daddy to take care of you. Right. But God ain't your daddy. God listen. is gonna continue to take care of you because He's Jehovah Jireh, no matter who you with. When I tell you I cannot stand for someone who has worked a job 20, 30 years and they say, well, I need somebody that's financially, um, financially, my, my financial equal for what? So they can take care of me. But how long you've been working on that job? Um, I've been there for 20 years. And how many? So you've bought a house. You got a townhouse. You got a rental property. You got cars. This year, you on your third car from what I can tell since you've been at college. Your right. fourth, fifth car. You, you can't take care of yourself. Right, 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 right. And like I said, I'm only saying that because I remember where I was when I was in my 20s. We all we, we were taught some yeah. bad stuff. We were taught some bad was stuff. Was passed down yeah. from us and some bad foolishness is yeah, what we were yeah. taught. But but we have to we have to grow in the wisdom. That's where the wisdom comes in. And mm-hmm. and we have to let go of some of those beliefs that were taught to us, even if they were taught to us in church. We got to let them go. Phone froze. Oh, but you know there what? We, look, we have, we have five we minutes. We out of time. We out of time. This has been wonderful. Now, you know, we might get some calls. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I told you now. I'm going to get the call to her, But I'm ready. I am too. I was like, bring them on because I would love the dialogue because what I, I feel like we, I feel like what we're saying is, is, is the truth. Mm-hmm. It's the truth from God. And I tell people all the time, I'm not one to usually say, well, God told me, because I tell them like this, God lives within me. Mm-hmm. When I sit still and meditate, mm-hmm. God's going to speak. Mm-hmm. So when I speak, you know it's true. Because mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I, I rarely, I'm not going to just talk, it just talk. That's right. That's me too. Say, Kill, you think you know everything. I said, hold up. Mm-hmm. I know everything I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know everything I, I, I know. <laughs> I know everything I know. Yeah. Everything and I always tell God people I when I say stuff, ask them yourself. Why are you like right. you can't talk to God yourself? Ask him. You don't have to right. take it from me. Ask him. Say, God, she said this. What is your perspective? He'll yeah. tell you. Exactly. Tell the people how they can find you, Nicole. Absolutely. You can find me on Facebook at J Nicole Speaks. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J Nicole Speaks. Uh, my website is www.jnicolespeaks.com. I'm also on Clubhouse, um, treading the water there at J Nicole Speaks as well. <laughs> me too. I'm trying to figure out. Maybe we have to do something we on need to Clubhouse. Do. We yeah. Have to do on Clubhouse. I'm trying. We have a little bit longer time. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to fill it out because it's a lot. I've just been trying to listen to see if if there are some people that think like me. That's why I've been trying to go. Yeah. On. Well, they're all like selling people. stuff right now. They all got a million dollar idea. Yeah, I haven't yeah. heard those. I've been in the in the relationship ones and just trying to hear what the people how the people think. Mm. So, the the really people are bitter right now, so you're not going to hear anybody open because people are just bitter and broken, and they and they're choosing to stay there. It, yeah, that that is so true. All right, yeah. I hope you have. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, Nicole. Oh my gosh, I I love when she comes. I told y'all. I told you last year you was gonna come every year. Yes, I don't know what we're gonna talk about anytime, but anytime on the show because I love when we have our chat. And for you guys, I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next week. Happy Valentine's Day. And Happy Valentine. Don't have a boo. Remember, you are love. God is love. And you just, you know, just put it in God's hand. And Amen. It, it'll come. It'll come. Amen. All right. Next bye, week. Michael. Bye. Okay. Into Their Dreams Foundation presents the golf tournament of the year, raising scholarships for aspiring national golf clubs in Milton, Georgia. The inaugural HBCU Swing Into Their Dreams Charity Golf Tournament. Registration and gourmet continental breakfast begins at 8 a.m. and shotgun at 10 a.m. Award reception follows. Come enjoy a day of jazz, mimosa, cigars, 
cash bar, silent auction, and more. For more information, contact 770-686-7148. Don't miss it.